Hello and welcome to the Package Manager Special Interest Group Weekly Sync for May 28th. Uh, I'm Andrew, your host for today because Aching Brain is moving house. Um, so uh, we've already got a note taker um, and the Cryptpad link is in the chat. So I'll start. Um, uh, this week I made a little project called IPFS NPM Republish. The idea being that you could um, go into a directory of a program, a JavaScript program that you already have installed locally, run a command and have a mini registry just for that project generated and uploaded to IPFS in a single easy uh, command. It works pretty nicely. Uh, once you have the, it basically will download everything, drop the original tables into a temp directory and add that directory to IPFS, which works just like a um, an NPM registry that is read only. Uh, and uh, I also added a command so that you could do it for an any individual module uh, as well, which basically will work out what the transitive dependencies of a of that particular module are upload all of those together in one little uh, mini registry so that you can then say npm install this module at the registry directly from ipfs this basically means that you can start to kind of share individual modules as well as applications over ipfs without needing a registry because all the packages have everything that you need in there and they're right next to the individual packages with a um a collection of all of its dependencies so it's basically like wraps everything up in a nice neat little package and puts it straight in ipfs uh, if we have some time at the end of the call i'll, I'll show a little demo um, also had a couple of fairly involved calls discussing the npm on ipfs roadmap and uh also the package managers deep dive that we're uh, going to be running at IPFS camp. I think both of those are ongoing. There are notes um, I put in the crypt pad, but I don't think there's any resolution that we've reached on either of those just yet. I also merged in all of the um, updated documentation on the package managers repo. So it's a little bit more organized and gets it out of the issue tracker. So it's hopefully a little bit easier for people to find and we can start to turn that into more of a kind of a story or uh, a path that you can follow to work out what the hell, like how IPFS and package managers work together and why things are like they are the way they are. Um, next thing I'm really doing is uh, a little bit more work on this um, uh, republish script to try and make it so that you can uh, have more versions than just whatever the current resolve version is available, um, as well as further planning on the IPFS camp deep dive uh, and kind of the brainstorming the, around the next set of work for package managers, special interest group on uh, my internet is awful. Sorry about that. Um, the uh, kind of planning for whatever the next six months of package managers work is, which should kind of shake out as some of the content for the deep dive uh, of areas to to work out if they are relevant to, to work in. Um, but we kind of need to know what those things would look like, first of all. Um, so that's kind of where my head's going to be this week. Uh, Jessica? Yeah, sure. So... Um a lot of the same things that Andrew did this week were things that I did this week, um, including talking through the um, the overall roadmap and the deep dive planning. I have uh, next up um, a few bits and pieces I need to tie for that, for like physical artifacts that we want to have in the room for the deep dive, um, like some posters with some key points that people can dot vote on. Uh, a couple of things like that. Um, uh, unpacked all the physical things, so hopefully we'll be a little bit less out of pocket than I've been the last week and a half. Um, 
And then, yeah, next step, more work on the deep dive and the next six months planning. Um, want to look at the overall readme for this SIG and add some of Molly's why package manager notes. Yes. I did make a little readme. Um, I just linked it in the chat, but feel free to completely overhaul it. It has just a little paragraph of each awesome. different page, um, but you can use that as a starting point. Right, right. And then the other, yeah, so, so I was going to put in the top level of the top level readme, I was going to put some of Molly's notes from last week um, from that word document that she made on the plane. It was like, why package managers? Very, very high level stuff. Um, and then, yeah, um, thank you for, for this um, directory. This is awesome. Um, and I, I may just flush that out a little bit more. So um, I think that's it for now. Who's next? I think we're the only ones with notes. Yeah, I'm just sort of. Oh, go ahead, Jim. <laughs> I'm just sort of lurking. Um, I did try uh, the uh, IPFS NPM republish, and uh, it's it's I don't know. I think it's a breakthrough. I don't know. I think it's sort of cool. So um, I, I think we should do a demo. Uh, uh, but see what Dean wants to talk about. Too. Yeah, Jim. Uh, um, would you be interesting and in, interested in doing a lightning talk of that? Since Andrew won't be there to do it, or we're, how are we going to do that? Were you guys going to do that together? We talked about this. Um, oh, the lightning talk on. I think I signed up. I'm signed up for one lightning talk. Um, All right, I'll hit. I'll hit you up later. All right. Okay. So, but, a team. Alternatively, I can do a video yeah. lightning talk. Okay. Jim's doing a talk on something else. That would be super. I think that would actually be super fun if you're still up for that. Perfect. Thank you. Adine? Uh Yeah, so um, I, I told Alex about this, but I have a, uh, a fork of Go IPFS that has a um, much less sucking version of IPNS. Um, yeah, so it, it, is, uh, it, is, it is very fast once you have discovered your peers, um, which sounds obvious and yet was not. Because uh, it still was slow, even when you were connected to everybody before. Um, uh, discovery is like not so slow because it now takes only one DHT query instead of sixteen. Um, and my next step is going to be uh, rendezvous integration, so that we can like just set up a couple of servers um, that can be then extended over time uh, and hopefully federated at some point. And that should make things like much, much faster without us needing to totally punt to DNS. Um, so I have a fork on uh, sort of in the, the, my, like, you know, in my GitHub slash IPFS. Yeah, Andrew. Um, something I noticed when having play around this week is it actually takes time to resolve your own IPNSs when you've just published them. I wondered if there's like some kind of shortcut, if you can provably check that the IPNS is one of your own, like if you have the private key for that, can you not even bother going out uh, to ask anyone else for it? Uh, yeah, I mean, you could, that, that could probably be set up because you wouldn't need to wait for a quorum anymore because you know you are the source of truth. But it's, it's only ha it's only like you can own nodes IPF IPNS key. Like if your peer ID is the IPNS key, then this is easy, right? But if you publish with a different key, now I also have to check my key registry to see if I'm the owner of that key as well. Um, so like it's not quite as trivial as it could be. Um, the good news is that with the Reasonably with the, you know, pub sub IPNS stuff, um, re republishing, like allowing a third party to republish a record on your behalf comes for free as part of how pub sub like gossip protocols work, which means that you would also be able to hear about yourself for free. All right. So like this would get solved by accident. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. It was mostly for the, um, that kind of first user experience of going like, oh, I published a name. Let me go put that in like uh, in desktop 
to see what it looks like and it goes ah this is going to take a while um or if you wanted in this ip uh, ipfs republish script if you wanted to have it drop a name at the end of it uh then like you want to use that registry straight away it makes it like a slower experience just to test that what you what you created would be successfully working um so yeah. if that's if that's faster just by accident then that's great there doesn't necessarily need for the shortcut um yeah i mean we'll, we'll have to play around with it i haven't tried that too much but it seems like it's like fast enough this is also partially because um the IPNS over PubSub, uh, even the existing, like the non-forked version, has a level of caching built into it. So as soon as you do a publish, like it hangs around. Um, so the yeah, the problem was just like you couldn't access, you couldn't really access that initially. So I bet you if you turned on IPNS over PubSub and you published to yourself and resolved from yourself, it would still be fast. Um, just because there's caching built into it. Is that just a flag uh, when running a command or when, when you I run a daemon? When you run a daemon, there's a dash dash enable name sys pub sub command. Cool. Um, but make sure you're doing that on like the latest Go IPFS because if you're using like 0.4.20, it will it will hang for reasons. <laughs> It'll still do what it's doing. It's just like it will it will hang um, and not return, even though it probably should. Uh, but yeah, if you want to, like the the fork I have is like pretty pretty you know reasonable. Does the things you would expect it to do. Um, one one caveat is that if you're trying to do re if you're trying to do like pushing updates quickly. There's a flag you have to pass into IPNS to make sure that you don't get a cached version of the data, or a. There's caching at the CLI level and caching at the network level. So if you want to turn off caching at the CLI level, then uh, there's a flag to pass in. Have you got like um, a pull request or uh, some docs that we can link to to get people to try this out? So I don't have I. There is a PR that describes what is happening, what is happening and, and why. However, I after talking with the libp2p folks, I have to like refactor and remajigger where everything lives um, to make life life easier for them. And so that's what I've been working on like this last week, and that's pretty much done now. So I just need to get some need to get some reviews and then set up a new PR for that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to have something out there so you guys could get a feel of like what it what it means when I say like fast after discovery. Um, cool. But yeah, that sounds I will good. Hopefully, have something better in the next week. Uh, right, should I do a a little demo of this IPFS republish script? Um, share share my screen. How does that work? Okay, so I just got my terminal for now. Um, I'm in a directory here, the, actually the program itself, but um, the important thing is that it has a package-lock.json, which contains the fully resolved dependency tree of this project, which has about 116 different things in it, I think. So loads of dependencies, um, and basically every one of these things in here is the flattened dependency tree for this project. Uh, it didn't used to have any dependencies, but I just had to add uh, one which brought in another hundred or something along with it. Um, so what we can run is a command uh, that basically will go and download a pacument and then for each version that's specified, um, the locked version, it will download that tarball and it'll add them all to a folder that basically makes the URL, if it's loaded over the gateway, look just like an NPM registry URL. So 
Uh, now, good question. How do I switch from just sharing? Oh, let's let's share my whole desktop instead. Uh, so if we open up IPFS desktop and paste in this uh, generated CID, go. You can see we got uh, different basically tables and this is a uh, JSON file, but rather than putting .json on the end, it looks like slash the name of the package, which is how NPM goes looking up things. Uh, that script then will add into uh, dot npm rc the configuration to use that new registry so that hap that then works out of the box you can delete your node modules and you can delete your uh, package lock.json uh, you don't have to but we'll, we'll imagine that we're starting from scratch almost uh, as if someone has just cloned this and then they can run npm install and that will pick up that new newly changed .npmrc file automatically. And as you can see, it's pretty fast. Like it's not because it's loading from your local IPFS gateway. Uh, then if we cat that package lock file again, you can see we have, uh, funnily enough, we, there's a bug here. Uh, it doesn't actually affect anything, but it puts a new line on the end of all of the tarball URLs but that gets ignored anyway. But each one of the tables is now resolved to the same local gateway. Uh, not They're not all the same uh, CID. It's the CID for each individual table rather than uh, the, the whole registry itself. Um, but this whole package, this whole collection of things is then being pulled from your local gateway automatically. So you're able to then share that with someone else uh, and they can start using that without necessarily even needing to be online. You can also, then if we go into a different tab, say like, I would like to um, to publish uh, some packages that I care about that I not necessarily have an application yet, but I wanna put individual packages onto IPFS. Let's say I'm going to go on a plane and I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna use a few of these packages to play with whilst I'm there. You can choose a particular version or it'll pick the latest version by default. Uh, and that will basically work out what the transitive dependency tree of that particular version of that module is, and then do the same thing. Uh, and that makes a uh, individual. Now, I wonder if I can access this on the public gateway. Possibly. Uh, ipfs.io yes cool so that's um uh that was already there because i'd already run that command before um otherwise it wouldn't have been necessarily that quick given my terrible internet uh but you can see we've got tables and we've got json uh packments and the json packment has uh or you can see one here a um a table which goes to localhost 8080 uh so that you can then reinstall that. The cool thing is that if we go back to my previous uh, project, um, so this one has a .npmrc in it already, which will use that uh, local registry. But if I say use install React with this new mini registry that I created, then uh, it works and you get a combination of those two mini registries installed, which then you can say, oh, uh, now I'll republish that. And that puts 116 rather than 106 or whatever it was uh, up into a new registry. So you can then start to combine different registries together uh, and republish them without needing to have a connection to the upstream registry. So you start to be able to kind of become the ruler of your own uh, domain when it comes to how and where you want to share your packages. Uh, still some questions around uh, like the trust of that. 
uh, but that might require some kind of notary service where or like signing of packages some way to prove out like the CID is what uh, does match up with or the integrity hashes could be compared with um, the NPM registry the thing that you end up with there is like if you want to make your own packages you can also publish those uh, directly to IPFS without needing to go through the registry so you then need somewhere to say like I announced that this is my package yes Jim I don't know if we have enough time but I'd like to I checked out the uh, the code for IPFS npm republish I'd like to clone what you just published oh sure go for it if you can post a link then I'll screen share so the the new registry I'll put it in the chat here um, that I just published what I might do uh, is I can't I have to copy it before I go full screen or share my screen. One thing I also is you have to check out the Git repository separate from checking out the from getting the IPFS link. So yeah, right now um, that particular project doesn't because it's a module rather than a uh, rather than an application, I'm not committing the lock file, I'm not committing the NPMRC, uh, but what I would imagine people do for their applications is they would commit both of those files, and so you'd be able to check out the uh, the Git repository and it would have all the config built in. Yeah, like if, if, you, if you could sort of share, um, this would be a higher level layer, I think, but like to be able to share like the, the Git, um, config like references and things so that people could clone it and that, that yeah, to be great. able to fling the whole thing uh, like almost your current directory with yeah. uh, git and all of the dependencies up would be would be an interesting next step when you do um when you were getting the latest where was it resolving latest from so latest will be generated from if uh, there are a number of versions listed inside of a document, it would order by semver and take whatever the greatest number is in there, unless it's tagged. So NPM, slightly different to many other package managers, you can say any version you like is the latest. You can tag it with a string of latest, and that will then resolve as latest. Uh, <laughs> okay, thanks. So I don't know if that would have synced for you yet, Jim. That's significantly oh. larger than um, the registry that I uh, like. How big is that? I imagine it's it's seven megabytes. It's not huge. I expected that to be larger than that. But uh, being on a video call and running IPFS at the same time, my <laughs> It's like, I'm not pretty sure if we could do this. Well, are we out of time? Maybe we should <laughs> try this offline. <laughs> but yeah, we can, uh, I'll, uh, you can give it a try and let me know if it works on Slack. Um, it is on the gateway now, so it may, that may speed things up. You can definitely see what I published on the gateway. Um, but, I think that is about all. So thanks everyone for coming and we'll see you next week.